Between June 17th and June 22nd, 2024, my family's farm in southwest Minnesota received over 13.4 inches of rain. Three days later, the water is subsiding, but the devastation is just starting to be revealed. Hello and welcome to High Tech Farmer. My name is Matthias, I'm a 24 year old farmer and welcome to my family's farm. Today we're actually gonna be leaving the farm right away as we're gonna be heading out to some of our fields to go do a little bit of crop checking to see what the damage looks like after the 13 inches of rain. Just got to the first field of corn that we're gonna go doing some scouting in. This was also coincidentally the first field of corn that we planted this season. And without a doubt, this field was set to have a really good year for us. We planted 106 day maturity corn out here. This field is pattern tiled every 50 feet. But coming out here today, I'm not as optimistic on this field. For starters, right off the road here, you can see we have a pretty large area that is drowned out. This corn's been underwater now for over 72 hours, and there is not even a question that this stuff is dead and not gonna have any regrowth on it. One optimistic thing I'm seeing, this right here is the tile inlet, so this is what's taking the water that's on the surface right now down to the creek a mile north of our place. And if you can see that little bit of swirl right there, that's showing the water's starting to swirl and drain down. So the water is slowly going down here, but with the crop being underwater for so long, it's just toasted. There's about two spots down at that end of this 160 acre field that are probably 10 acres of drowned out corn like you saw back there. Now I'm just taking the hike up to the other end of the field where there isn't a road access to see what things are looking like over at this end. Here's another soggy spot of the cornfield. The height of the corn reflects the excess moisture that we've been having. You can see the corn's quite a bit shorter than what it was back there. Not great. As I was walking, I noticed, thought I should point out all this topsoil that got washed here. This is the other unfortunate thing of these big heavy rains is there's impacts beyond just one year because having all of our topsoil end up here rather than spread evenly across all the fields, that's gonna hurt us next year, the year after, and possibly the year after that. Made it to the other end of the field, and honestly, it's worse than I thought. Clearly we have a lot of corn that is bent over right now. It doesn't look like it's snapped off. Yeah, it's not snapped off at the roots. Basically what I mean by that is if it was snapped off, this would be kinked over and there would be no more nutrients going into the plant. But a lot of it is bent over, and it's for a good at least five or six acres out here. And it's tough to say if some of this will come back. The corn here isn't actually bent over because of a big windstorm that we have. This is actually just bent over because of all the rushing water that came through the field, which eventually just pushed and pushed and pushed on that corn plant. And as you can tell, eventually the corn plants had to give, and here's the results. I was looking at this corn, and look what I found. A little bit of barbed wire fence. Well, it's not just a little bit. This is actually still hooked up to the fence at the field edge right there. Somehow that must have got broken off in the storm as well. So now we got a little barbed wire fence in the field.
not only did the barbed wire fence here come into our field, but we also had what appears to be a tile blowout in this field. So like I mentioned up at the front, we have the tile that's supposed to take the water out, but down here, there must've been a break in one of the connections and that started to force water and it started to eat away. So another thing that we're gonna have to get fixed out here. Since I've showed you guys a little bit of the damage we have in this one cornfield, a lot of the cornfields look the same way. We're seeing between 10 and 30% of loss of our complete corn stand across the field. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this stuff is kind of new to me as well because the last two years of me farming, it's been bone dry. We've never had to replant the last two years, haven't had corn falling over because of how wet it is. So what I've learned this year, and what I wanna share with you guys is, I thought we could just come out here and replant a little bit more corn, but the reality is, number one, the corn that is standing out in the middle of the field is too tall for us to physically bring the planter way back out into this portion of the field because we're a half mile from the road in that direction, half mile from the road in that direction. So we can't get the planter out here. And the other thing is, even if we could get the planter out here, like we, we physically could out there up in the front of the field, the problem is it's getting way too late into the summer. We just passed the summer solstice, so the days are starting to get shorter and shorter and shorter to raise a corn crop because corn takes a lot of power from that Mr. Sunshine right there behind me. And as we start to inch closer and closer to fall, if we were to plant another corn hybrid out here, even if it was shorter day maturity, we would be very lucky to even grow an ear unless the rest of the summer is just obliviously hot. So naturally that begs the question, Matthias, what are you gonna do in spots of your corn fields that look like that? Obviously I have a ton of money invested in seed, chemical, fertilizer, equipment costs, rent costs, labor. I mean, you can't just tell me you're gonna walk away from 10 to 30% of your crop and not try to do something different. And to tell you the truth, I, I gave you our two options. I mean, what else can I do? I can't get to the back of the field. I can't plant earlier corn unless the sun's gonna stay out and it's gonna be 70 degrees until the middle of December. So, I guess hope for the best. We won't really know how crop insurance turns out on our acres really until the harvest price is set. But that's kind of the predicament we're in on a lot of the corn acres this year now. I've seen enough after only looking at one corn field. I've driven by a couple of the other ones. Some of them aren't as easy to see from the road. Some of the drowned out spots are way in the back or way off to the side. So now I think we're gonna go ahead to one of the soybean fields show you guys what we're gonna be doing over there, which is different from the corn. So I'll see you guys at one of the soybean fields. To head to one of the soybean fields, I'm gonna take one of the routes we took the other day. There's still a barricade here in front of this road, but I can see up in front of the bend site, there isn't water running over the road. So we'll see how far we can take this road and if it's still blocked with water or not. Well, the water ain't running over here. You can see this is how far up the water made it. The creek is actually runs under the road right there where that sign is. You can see it backed into our field here behind the farm. Basically killed another three acres of this field. But let's keep going and see how far we can make it up this road that follows the creek. Safe to say the creek here is not moving at all. You can't even see any water moving downstream. A lot of this needs to go into the Des Moines River, but because this rain event hammered Eastern South Dakota, southwest minnesota all of southern minnesota northern northwest iowa the des moines river is just completely backed up and they're seeing record levels in places they've never seen that much water so even here three days after the rain stopped we still have a fair amount of water and the creeks are full so far the road's been accessible i'm now at the point where the bridge was overflowing with water a good two feet just over three days ago and i gotta show you guys the water's receded and it's receded quick, but not without leaving damage to the road. You can see here, here's my six foot three shadow. <laughs> no. Here's the gullies it made on the road, really, really deep. I mean, there's my size 13 boot. That's easily a foot and a half deep gullies that someone better be careful if you're driving this road at night. And as you can tell, it washed off all the gravel on this road. It's just solid clay now, but it is passable. So we're gonna keep going up this road and then try to find a soybean field to show you guys one of those. This here 
here is an 80 acre soybean field of ours and all of these dark black spots that you see across the field those are spots where water sat and water sat for too long if we walk out into this soybean field which i should mention i did try to plant without touching the steering wheel only ended up touching the steering wheel for i believe 15 times i'll show you guys what the soybeans are looking like up close if we look at this row of soybeans they look like nothing more than just brown stems that have been rotten off from the rain that sat on them for over three days in the drowned out spots in the soybean fields however different from the corn all hope is not lost because if you look the soybeans that we have out here aren't three, four foot tall like the corn is, which means once and if our soybean fields ever dry out, we'll be back out here with our soybean planter, stubbing in some more very, very early maturity soybeans. Similar to corn, it might be too late to even try planting soybeans depending on when we really get out here. But the real thing is, if we can harvest some soybeans off of them, great. But also we just want them because we need cover out on our ground. What I, mean by, what I mean by that is we want a standing crop out here because we hate to see fallow ground in the middle of the field because that just encourages weeds to start to grow out there, which builds up our seed, seed bank of weeds for next year. And it also just gives way for wind erosion and heavy rains again to just erode away more of our topsoil. Another thing different between our corn acres and our soybean acres that we still need to do for this year is on our soybean acres, we don't need to apply any more fertilizer for this year. Everything that we have out on our soybean acres was applied prior to planting. So that is one thing less that we need to do on soybeans. But we do, however, need to make one more application of herbicide to start killing some of the weeds that are growing from the recent rains. The water did subside. That's the field right there that I'm trying to get to. But there is still a lot of water in the fields right next to the road. I didn't miss much not being able to come up to this field for the last three days. As you can tell, a lot of standing water here. I know for sure there's a lot more in the back corner. We were planted over 50 acres of soybeans already this year at this field because of how wet it was earlier in the month of June. And by the looks of it, we have at least 50 acres on this field to replant. So, now we just hope we get another chance to do that and hope they don't drown out again on this field. I've driven around now enough to see that we're not gonna be in the field for at least another three days. But we're already wanting to starting to make some of those management decisions so we're already bringing in some earlier maturity soybeans so if we do get an opportunity to get up back out in the field we will put in some more soybeans but now i'm going to head back up to the yard and we'll start cleaning up some of the damage that happened down by the creek at the farm we have this drainage ditch which runs right at the edge of our main farm place and because during the heat of the storm this was running about three to five feet higher and what it normally does, it actually raised up a lot of previous year's crop residue and all the fields upstream and placed that here inside our yard. So now we're just gonna start scooping up and trying to get rid of a lot of this residue that's sitting in the grass to prevent the grass from dying and to clean up the yard. Ranger's all loaded up. Got a nice load of this mulch is what I'm gonna call it. And he's got the 560 filled up up there. Got everything on this side of the creek cleaned up. We'll go dump this and then we'll start picking up on the other side.
and now you see why I drive the Ranger and dad gets to drive the tractor with the loader because it's a lot more work trying to get all the stuff that we cleaned up out of the Ranger. I'm here at the bench site now and the goal is to try to get all of this big rock and gravel that washed into the ditch out of the ditch and use that to fill in at the driveways where it washed away. It's honestly quite impressive how much force water has behind it because these rocks that we're getting out of the dish right now, we're, on our, we're already on our third bucket full at the tractor, and these are two to three inch rocks. So that takes a lot of force to push that many rocks, given it's downhill, but still, it's impressive what water can do. We got all the rocks out of the ditch now that we could easily clean out with the tractor and loader. Now it's time to use the rake and start raking them into piles like this to try to get the rest of it cleaned up. most of the rocks cleaned out of the ditch here he's starting to blade down a little bit more up on that driveway but it's getting really hot out here so we're gonna go in for supper and then wait till the sun goes down a little bit to get the rest of these rocks back up on the driveway so that's gonna do it for today's video thanks so much everybody for watching see ya in the next one